All right, whenever you're ready. Euthanasia is the act of committing the death of hopelessly sick or injured individuals. It is a controversial topic, almost as heavily debated as abortion. However, in this case, the choice of life is in the individual's own decision. It is an emotional topic, one that requires both moral and legal debates. I should make it clear that euthanasia is not meant for those that suffer from depression or have suicidal thoughts because these feelings have the opportunity to be remedied. <clears throat> these feelings are oftentimes a result of chemical imbalance or due to problems in, in life and can be treated with medication or therapy. Euthanasia is practiced on those that are terminally ill and are mentally capable of making a clear decision. Choosing to die takes serious considerations and should be saved as one of the last options a person can take. My main claim is that euthanasia, in the, for in the form of voluntary physician-assisted suicide, should be an available option for those suffering from a terminal illness. After I briefly describe the current situation with euthanasia, I will discuss the moral right a person has over their own life. I will then explain why doctor-assisted suicide should be a legitimate and legal option. There are two types of euthanasia. Passive euthanasia, where one is held back from the treatment they need, such as insulin for those with diabetes, or if someone is in a vegetative state and hooked up to life support, removing said life support would be another example of passive euthanasia. Active euthanasia would be administering a lethal dose of medication um, to intentionally uh, commit suicide. In the U.S., physician-assisted assi physician suicide is currently only legal in the states of Washington, Oregon, and Nebraska. It is important to note that it is the patient that administers a lethal dose of medication to themselves. A physician must be the one to oversee the act of suicide, making sure the dosage is enough to kill and that the death will be relatively smooth and painless. A person has the right to their own life. This is a moral right for every single human. If you have nothing else, you at least have yourself and your own life. Along the same note, someone who, folk, who faces uh, a debilitating, debilitating disease, suffering in a terminal end, should at least have the option to end their, their life with dignity. It is simply their life and their choice. To exit on one's own terms is a great liberty to have. <clears throat> a peaceful death surely beats dying in a prolonged state of agony. To be hooked up to tubes and machines simply because society says we should live as long as possible is a bleak way to leave your life on earth. How will you be able to say goodbye to your friends and family if your mind has deteriorated to the point of forgetting them? If we have the rights to life, we surely have the rights to death. Physician-assisted suicide is not quite legal in all the states. The U.S. should take notes from Norway, a country that fully accept, accepts and is dealing with legal euthanasia, dealing well with legal euthanasia. The only three states can legal, the only three states can legally perform the act of this act of mercy. Many other doctors from the other states help alleviate their patients from the pains of life. This shows how widely accepted euthanasia really is in the medical field. <clears throat> My grandfather died in 2006. He was suffering and was content with dying. He understood this and told the doctor and my family before falling into an un unresponsive state. Thankfully, the doctors understood and asked my family if we were okay with letting him go. They gave him large amounts of morphine to give him a peaceful end. If doctors perform euthanasia, <clears throat> why must we legalize it? A doctor or nurse risks their career when they allow for, for an overdose. It's a termini termi terminally ill man with cancer convinces his doctor to allow him to die. The man overdoses and his family, outraged by his decision, chooses to sue the doctor or hospital for malpractice. <clears throat> if the whole country were to legalize euthanasia, then doctor-assisted suicide would be a personal matter. But the government does not interfere because it is a choice. Under no circumstances will we freely kill people that choose to, that choose to live until their disease kills them. Legalizing simply, simply means giving people the freedom of choice. Some may argue that the only thing holding back euthanasia are those that would abuse it. One could argue that there will be those without a terminal ailment that want to commit suicide. These people are usually unfit to make this judgment. We attribute depression to, again, chemical imbalances or their quality of life. We can help them and try to um, give them medication or therapy to bring them back to a, a healthy state of mind. Physician-assisted suicide initially sounds harsh. The act seems like giving up. However, to those in perpetual pain, it is humane mercy.
All right, Matthew, you do clearly identify the proposition. The only problem is it's a proposition of policy as opposed to a proposition of fact, so you're going to have some problems there. Uh, there is a preview of what the supporting points are going to be. Uh, however, I didn't really feel like during the body of the speech that you came back to those particular points and structured the speech around them. Sometimes you touched on those issues, but they were not really the structure of the argument, and some of those supporting points were value claims rather than claims of fact. And like we talked about, a claim of fact can only be supported by other claims of fact or facts themselves. So you're, you're kind of all over the place. You basically have a uh, general speech about uh, euthanasia that is not focusing on the factual claims, whether or not there's a need for euthanasia. Uh, and I think that that's, uh, pr that's problematic. Like I said, in the body of the speech, I didn't hear any internal signposting. Sometimes I heard reference to some of the issues that you set up at the beginning of the speech, but uh, you need to be consistent about that. Uh, you have a, a personal example that you use. I'm going to wonder, the way you presented the personal example, you talked about uh, the doctors providing your grandfather with large amounts of morphine. Either he lived in Washington, Oregon, and Nebraska, and therefore it was legal for them to do that, or the doctors killed your father according to the state law that uh, the state that he happened to be in. That seems to be a strange inference. Or did they simply treat his pain and allow the uh, disease to run its course, which is a different kind of of issue, and I'm not sure it's nearly as controversial on that, so I'm not sure how well your example helps there. Uh, what you need to do is you need to show us the more information that shows that terminal illnesses do in fact have a negative impact on people's uh, lifestyles, that they are diminished in some way, that they're harmed by uh, perpetuating their life. There seems to be an assumption that uh, all people suffering from a terminal illness are in fact suffering. They might be dying, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're suffering, and you need to show that they are suffering. Uh, you do have this kind of generic argument that you're making that's kind of a re reservation or rebuttal issue about um, depression, and uh, what I think uh, you need to show is that there are people who don't fit into the category of folks who are depressed that need to have access to euthanasia because they are in some kind of pain or because uh, it's harming them in some way and they're diminished uh, in that situation. You talk about the choice issue and uh, I think you need to have a little bit more information about how the choice issue works. We should be able to get some examples from the three states that you mentioned uh, where this is going on that there aren't, there isn't coercion, there aren't doctors making decisions for patients, there isn't, you know, uh, grandchildren urging grandpa to go on to the, go to the light grandpa because I need the money that you're spending on your health care to pay for college. I mean, we need to see that this is in fact something that is you know about the needs of the person with the illness not uh, some you know, not some other issue that's going on there all right thank you